Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. It's beginning you to look, look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Everywhere you go. <laughs> that reminds me so much of Dory speaking whale in Finding Nemo. Everywhere you go. It's Christmas time. Woo! Depending on when you're listening to this episode, it's either two days away from Christmas or Christmas has come and gone. Either you way. Are either really stoked waiting to open your gifts or you have already opened them and realized that it was a very disappointing experience. <laughs> Where's my loot? Mm-hmm. Were you ever disappointed as a kid with <laughs> Christmas experiences? I'm asking the wrong person. I'm sure you'll get into that later, maybe. I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I had amazing Christmases. Oh yeah, there, there were always really fun, fun things that I got. Ooh, my mom was, was definitely an amazing gift giver. Yeah, she is. She's a freaking boss. She would always like, I I loved opening stockings every Christmas morning with her mm-hmm. because it would always, stockings weren't like, you know, just a couple of little doodads. It was doodads. like, she actually got me like action figures and then would Joe's. open them up and put them in the stockings. So oh. Like, oh my God, there's like four action figures in here. Oh, in here. In here. In here. Uh, I do remember uh, an exciting Christmas where I was freaking out about Ninja Turtles. Ooh. I only remember that really because there was a video of me freaking out about it and I'm in the background and my parents are in the fo- foreground <laughs> paying no attention to me. Oh my gosh, I saw it. It's horrible. It's one of the worst videos. But we now that we've now. gone through the trauma counseling, it's, it's hysterical. Because you're literally like, Mom, Dad, look at what I got. I love it. Donatello. Oh Michelangelo, yeah. And you're like level 10 excited and your mom is cleaning and not listening. She's literally taking the wrapping paper from your hand before you've even taken it off the present. And your dad is like just behind doing, I, what, I don't even know what he's I doing. Know. Not running the camera well, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, um, it's hysterical. <laughs> anyways, but Christmas is here. Christmas time is here and we're going to talk about Christmas and if you already listened to it this is probably going to give you some insight into how you operate around Christmas time and what you felt last week or a month ago or three months ago depending, depending on, on when, when you're you listen to it yeah yep. but if you're about to go into it we're also going to give you some hints and clues we want to teach you guys how to how to love and be powerful during the holidays yeah especially during Christmas time um, maybe you could gather your family around this podcast and be like hey we're doing this. We're listening. We're, we're gonna feel together. Yeah, that literally sounds like the worst case. Yeah, scenario. that sounds terrible. If Don't my do family that was like, I'd hate you, you have to listen to a podcast about feelings and then talk <laughs> about it. I'd be like, ah. So what's everyone feeling? Well, Grandpa over here wants to get drunk now because he had to talk about feelings. So <laughs> that's how he's feeling. Yeah, you know something I think about loving myself well is being self aware. Yeah. Of who I am and why I work the way that I work and why I feel what I feel. And this is something that most people have not actually learned the art of is knowing why they feel what they feel and what is connected to it. And so they have crazy emotions that feel erratic that drive them all over the place. And so I think it's really valuable to understand what's going on inside of us during the holiday season. And then also if you are somebody who has great Christmases and you just love them and you have great traditions and you're like Elf, you know, like, oh my gosh, it's Christmas, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. Yes. Like, um, it's valuable for you to I love wish I was that. Will Ferrell. I wish you were too. Elf. Mm-hmm. Buddy. Mm-hmm. I would be married to Buddy. He kind of reminds buddy. me of you, actually. <laughs> kind of has this that personality. awkwardly shaped body, but it's yes. so awkwardly shaped, it's funny. <laughs> it's what makes Will Ferrell funny. I've never thought his Good body Good comedian has awkward. awkward shaped body. Well, you could never be a comedian then because you're sexy. I'll take it. Mm. Okay, so 
Um, if you are one of those people that loves Christmas, it's valuable for you to be able to have empathy and like kind of think through what this holiday could be like for people who aren't you. Just so that my goal in this episode is that you can have compassion for yourself and know what's going on in yourself and you can have compassion on others through this process. But before we do that, we wanted to quickly let you know that the final days to sign up for the Living Fully Alive 2020 course are here and you can Woo! save... $100. That's right. December 26th through the 31st. You can go to stumballconsulting.com. Use the coupon code resolution2020 at the checkout and save that $100. Yeah, you got to hurry up though because um, registration is almost done. It this, The class starts January 6th. Yep. Make your new year an awesome, make your new decade an awesome decade. Now, one of the things that we suggest is getting through the holidays. You Shove know, your emotions in a bucket and eat, eat, eat. That's that's horrible. <laughs> that is a horrible idea. That is just a terrible suggestion. Now, what I was going to say no, is peppermint funny. schnapps oh. inside of your cocoa. <laughs> I was like, why didn't you even give me a laugh? You are so focused on your own joke. <laughs> don't steal my thunder. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Well, what we want to do, we don't want to be total Debbie Downers, but nope. we are going to talk about why holidays are painful for people. Yeah. There, there's some common triggers. Yeah. And, and, um, and experiences for people. And then we're going to talk maybe about how we can be powerful in the midst of that. Yeah. If you're getting triggered and you're having those emotions come up what you can do to not hate your life yeah and we talked a little bit about stuff like this in our thanksgiving episode we're gonna go a little bit further in this and we're also again like she said gonna empower the people uh that are feeling awesome yeah to not be offended by people who aren't feeling awesome Re yes just the other night we watched the grinch yeah the 2018 oh, version so true and i think it's it adorable it's, yeah and it's such a great picture of people during the holiday season and it helps 100%. give tremendous empathy right if we can get into other people's shoes and go, oh, what what's happening inside of their world? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not just being an a-hole. Yeah. You actually have a lot of pain around this holiday coming up. So a couple highlights from Grinch. Do you want to point out a couple things that you saw in Grinch just to kind of parallel this? Yeah. Well, so the Grinch has all of these memories around Christmas, around feeling alone, feeling excluded, feeling like everyone has something he doesn't have feeling a lack of love. And I think it's really common for people who feel, and there's so many different reasons we feel alone. You could have an entire family and still feel alone inside of that. Or you could have where you feel orphaned or where your family has split up. Or there's a lot of reasons that we feel alone in the holidays. Yeah. And sometimes the holidays feel like, just like the Grinch is looking in on all the windows yeah, and everybody's- Yeah, he's peering in and everyone's super happy, which isn't real. No, totally. There are happy moments, but that's not the norm. Yeah. I, I was laughing at the happy moments being like, I don't know very many families that this is their Christmas. <laughs> that are just singing carols inside of their home. And, and like everybody's filled with cheer. No, you know that somewhere in that house, a kid's getting a talking to. <laughs> <laughs> you stop this now, you're embarrassing me. Yeah. So, um, so he feels really alone and I think that aloneness can be heightened on the holidays. Very much so. Because somewhere inside we believe there's like a should. Holidays mean you should be with family. You should feel like you belong to something bigger yeah. than you. You should, feel, you know, and it's kind of a false idea and perception that a lot of us feel pain from not having that. Cause I'm like actually more of humanity has things that don't feel great about Christmas. Yeah, totally. And I think that it's very easy for us to slide into comparison. Yes. And compare my life to somebody on Instagram or to other friends and family that feel like they're doing Christmas as well. And honestly, some families just have a better ability to compartmentalize. Totally. <laughs> which is awesome. We know how to put smiles on, which is great until some volcanic eruption. But, you know, it's it, it, there's a lot of places where what you see isn't what you actually get. Yeah. Lots of people are hurting. I just want to like pull people in. If you feel alone or you feel like you don't belong or you're feeling grief or loss, and we'll talk about why that comes up at the holidays. But And if you're I, not we, one of those people, we're going to talk to you here in a you minute too. too. Yeah. So, so just hang on. But, we're, we're helping you understand the people that don't have smiles ear to ear. <laughs> there is a sense of common humanity. Yeah. Which is like, actually, I'm a part of a lot of people on the planet who all are feeling the same 
feelings. I'm yeah. I'm someone who has bad memories around Christmas. Oh, well, welcome to a ton of people here. Yeah. Oh, I'm somebody that suffered loss this year. Oh, well, there's so many people in these same shoes. And that's actually something that's comforting for me is to recognize yeah. often what happens is when we feel pain, we think, well, everybody else doesn't feel this at Christmas time. Well, nobody else is going through this. Well, Surreal. I see all my friends have these great Christmas plans. Well, everybody's doing this. And you can end up thinking you're the one person who isn't happy or you're the one person who isn't okay. And that's just not true. Yeah, it's not. So a couple of them, you, you kind of made mention their losses. Let's just rip the bandaid off on the big one. Holidays bring up losses. Yeah. And whether that- Because all of a sudden, I didn't, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. All of a sudden what? All of a sudden you are paying attention to are all my people here. Yeah. And so if somebody died or if there was a divorce or if there was a, a breakup or if you lost a child or you miscarried or you couldn't get pregnant, whatever it is, we all have this hope, this fantasy that at Christmas, everything will be good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, because a lot of people, it's not, when we have losses, it's not just the, the loss when it does happen that we have to grieve. Yeah. It's all the dreams we had. Mm -hmm. for that relationship again whether it's children it's spouses it's you know um d dating significant others we have dreams and imagination of the next christmas and it and it's not there or the next thanksgiving and it's just they're not there and now you're having to maybe it's been f it's five christmases later and you're still having to grieve like Oh no, I dreamt that at this point in my life, I would be sitting down with these people. And, totally. and, and five years later, after that happened, nothing's changed or, or it's still not there. It never reconciled. And here we are. Yeah. So it's a, so it's a time when people are, are paying attention to their lack. And in one way, I love this. It helps people grieve things that they sometimes can shove aside. Oh yeah. It, it demands. It's this invitation that happens where it's like, you can't run from this. Here's the invitation. Yeah. Like maybe mm -hmm. your dad died a couple of years ago and Christmas reminds you, Oh, I miss him. There's a beautiful gift in getting to grieve that again and allow right. yourself to or feel grieve it for the first time. Sometimes people like shut it down and totally. at some point holidays are going to hunt you down and be like, you have to do this. Yes. <laughs> you have to look at this or you're going to be the Grinch all lonely on your mountaintop. Right. So I think that that's the beautiful thing is it can help us feel, but the downside to it is sometimes we can only look at the lack. Yep. And then whatever we focus on magnifies and grows. And so then it becomes all consuming. I'm all alone. I'll never get what I need. I'll never get what I want. And I think that, 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 that that's, that's a side note for those of you who maybe you've had some losses in the past and you're now five to 10 years down the road and you still feel as devastated five to 10 years down the road as you did back then it might be a time where you actually begin to say, no, I, I need to actually deal with this. I need to come alive this year. I I'm need going to, to choose to come alive. Life. I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to choose to find the beauty in the people that are around me and be thankful for what's there instead of what isn't suddenly. Yeah. Cause there is a place, uh, I, grief, everyone has their own grief process and the time that it takes to work that process out. But at some point in our journey, we have to make a choice to move forward. Yeah. That doesn't mean we don't have any sense of pain whatsoever, but the big heavy boulders start getting thrown off our shoulders because we choose to reconcile and move forward. Well, I remember a couple of years ago, I went through the season where I just, so many things got shattered in my life at once and I felt so alone and, um, <clears throat> I'm not actually crying. I just got phlegm. I felt so alone. <laughs> I felt so alone. Um, and so I remember like in that season, in holidays or whatever moments, it was like rubbing in my face. I don't belong to something bigger than yeah. me. I don't feel connected, all that stuff. And I would say that I don't think I have more friends now than I did then. Like uh -huh. I think I have the same friends, but like, after I grieved the aloneness, that feeling went away. And then I started treasuring the relationships that yeah. I have. And so nothing circumstantially has changed, but I don't feel alone at all this year. Right. 
And so there is a part, and I think I had to go through that. The grief process is really valuable. It's really empowering. I don't want it trapped in my body. I don't want aloneness trapped in there. So I'm thankful to have felt it. But um, I think most people think I need my circumstances to change before I can feel like I belong or I feel connected or I feel loved. And and I would just say that's the thing where when we focus on our lack, we can sometimes miss what is. Because again, I had all of these same relationships three years ago, Yeah, but I was focused on all that I had lost, not all that I had. So good. I think another thing that stands out to me is uh, triggers that people have around family systems. Yes. Some of you aren't going to be with family and that's just, you don't feel like you're, well, let me back up. Some of you aren't going to be around family this season because of your family triggers. <laughs> You're like, I will enjoy my holidays without my family. I moved halfway across the world so I would not have to spend holidays with my family any longer. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I have a client whose family feels very ab- like abusive and painful. Yeah. And I'm like, don't do holidays with your family. Yeah. Like find a way. Like she hated every holiday. I'm like, f- go see them another time. Go in a different time, go in a different season, go for spring break, go for summer, like do something else. You don't have to be with family mm-hmm. during, sorry, I side trail rabbited, what? Ra- rabbit, rabbit trail? trail? <laughs> Somebody on a rabbit trail? Sidetracked on a rabbit mm-hmm. trail. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh huh. Well, anyways, I mean, so those of you that are going into family systems uh, for Christmas and sometimes all of a sudden, you start exploding inside because you feel like the little kid who has to fit into a certain mold an expectation that people have of you ways of talking to you. I know that I have one friend and every time he goes home to be around his family, they use his old nickname (laughs) and he hates his old nickname (laughs) and he feels so, um, he's like right back to being a five year old. He feels so humiliated and stuff and Mm -hmm. he's a very capable person. And so it's one of those where he just wants to explode and yell. Oh yeah. Tell the Vogue one. Oh yeah. Well, there, there, there's a, a woman the lead editor in chief, I think chief editor or leader. I don't know what her name, what is she's the head of Vogue uh-huh. editor in chief at Vogue. And she has spent her entire life trying to be wildly successful yeah, and being wildly successful, totally, but not in her family's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever she gets around her family and she talks about this in a documentary, um, the September issue, she talks about when she gets there with her family, all of a sudden, it's kind of like they're like, oh, that's cute. You, that's you, cute what you do. Oh, you're with Vogue and fashion. That, that's so cute. And her families are pro- predominantly intellectuals who value mm-hmm. things like maybe um, doctors or lawyers or or um, scientists, people inside of the teaching, teach, big teaching credentials, PhDs. Oh, okay, like okay, that, okay. You know. Yeah. But but inside of it, she immediately feels like a child again, and mm-hmm. she hates it. And now this big, powerful woman who's fully capable inside of her field and fully respected by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of right. people, all of a sudden feels like she's lost all respect totally. <laughs> and just dying about it's the idea maddening. of going home. It's totally maddening. And so for, for those of us that go into those family systems, we have to be able to walk in and really find an identity before we ever get there Yes. or start swimming to find our identity. <laughs> start swimming. Just keep swimming. I'm going to sink. Just keep swimming. All right. But paddling with everything inside of you towards shore to be able to go, okay, who do I say I am? And mm-hmm. I think that when we are in the middle of family moments, especially something like Christmas yeah. and this type of thing is happening, we're being given an invitation to decide what we're going to believe to be true about ourselves in this space. If we do feel respected, you may never get them to respect you because they don't want to give it, but you can respect you. Absolutely. And I think for this one, I use like a lot of self-talk. Like if I need to go to the bathroom to talk to myself, I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'm going to say, you're lovable, you're worthy, you don't have to get their approval, you're already approved of people value you like I'm going to go speak. So you're suggesting like schizophrenia? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, And I do like, I kind of go self soothe a little bit, um, which is kind of just validating and acknowledging truth. Like, Hey, whether or not they see that you have substance, I see that you have substance, whether or not 
like because what happens is the real pain on the holidays is when we abandon ourselves because yeah. of how our family treats right. us the, that itself abandonment is i'm an idiot i'm stupid what's wrong with me I, I get angry with myself all kinds of things like or that. or even just the shame feeling instead right. of being That's like no i see well i'm saying it doesn't have to be negative necessarily like you may not be like i'm stupid you right. might just feel heavy on the inside right and feel like there's something wrong with you and no, you may not feel like there's something wrong with me. You're not hearing me, but that's okay. No, I hear you saying that, but I'm saying the subcontext is a belief that there's something wrong with me. But that's not what Whether I'm Whether or not you're aware of it. Okay, but that's not what I'm communicating. Okay, heaviness. <laughs> so it's not shame you're communicating. <laughs> no, I'm talking much more about the self-abandonment, which is not, I believe I'm bad, but like, oh, they believe I'm bad and I'm... I'm starting to think maybe they're more right about me than I am. So okay. it's not that I believe that I'm bad. It's that you're starting to believe that you're bad. Cause they feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm poking holes in your cheese. All right. So I get you. <laughs> Makes sense. You dork. So fam, the family systems, really what it reveals when you start having those meltdowns is that you've given your family way too much authority. Yeah. In, as far as dictating your value or identity yes. or your... Or, and and yeah. dictating how you feel about yourself. That's what yeah. I was trying to communicate. Okay. Like, yeah. you're, like if we give, if we abandon ourselves, it's that we are deciding we're going to feel about ourselves the way that our family feels. We're going to look totally. at ourselves the way that they look at us. Yeah. Even if we don't believe that, we're going to give up our opinion of us. For theirs. For theirs. And submit it to their shame cycle potentially. Yeah. And so one of the things that I think is really valuable about being around a family system is it gives you lots of clues. Mm-hmm. It, so why you're so messed up. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's real. <laughs> why am I so jacked up? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Just spend a holiday with my parents, my yeah. siblings. Well, when you're- In my old hometown. As a side note, <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you. Not just family, but a lot of people will return to their mm-hmm. hometown. Oh, yeah. And so they can feel great about their family in their hometown, but they do not feel great about their hometown. I know for me, when I originally used to go back to my hometown of Glasgow, Montana, I had so many massive emotions because it carried a lot of pain, not just in our family system, but in the experience that I had in my childhood. And some of you are going to go back for the holidays. And it reminds me of Just Friends. Oh, uh huh. Yes. If you guys have seen that uh, with um, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds, he's so dreamy. <laughs> Gosh, I just want to see one of your man crushes. He is him wanna, and Chris Pratt. I want him to just. I want to have a cuddle party between me, <laughs> him, Chris Pratt, and Chris Hem- Hemsworth, and I want them to just sandwich me in the Chris middle. Chris Hemsworth. I've never heard that one before. He's pretty dreamy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably that's the one I probably least agree with, but Ryan Reynolds and Chris Pratt. I like them because they have a great sense of humor. Yeah. We can make a big man sandwich. Hey, mm. if you're listening out there, Chris Pratt, Ryan Reynolds, want to make a man sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> want to make a man sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, so for me, I actually would go to my hometown and that would stir up things. And then I'd be maybe intense or aggressive towards people I loved. And, and they're like, what is going on? But it's because I'm bracing inside for the moment when I run into somebody that I don't like from my past. And I think that that's a big one that a lot of people don't think about as the holidays come up is not just their family of origin, but their place of origin. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I was trying to talk about is (laughs) I'm having a hard time communicating over here. Before you imagine that man sandwich. (laughs) All right. So good. Um, Was how I love family dynamics because it pushes up triggers and when you find out what your buttons are you can find out what your beliefs are yes and typically those beliefs are dictating a lot of your life so Uh, not just a little bit so you go back to your family and maybe the way that your family does presence just triggers you so much you're feeling frustrated shut down you're feeling like it's stingy big emotions are hitting and so you're like i hate how my family does gifts and then you actually then you get to investigate that and find out what's going on inside and then what you realize is oh my family system my beliefs around money feel really crazy like what they taught me about money and then you recognize oh actually that affects all of my life with money yeah so these are like family triggers or if you're not around family you're just around friends and you're getting triggered same thing because they often trigger family things at holidays um 
it gives you clues to the beliefs that are subconsciously governing your life. So real. So that's an invert that like your Christmas gift this season <laughs> may not be under a Christmas tree. <laughs> it may be when you chew out a, grandma, a monstrous explosion in your soul. And you start asking, what is my belief system that is yep. driving my emotions right now? Let's talk about uh, triggers around food. Oh, because oh, holidays dang, and Christmas yum, is yum, yum, cookies yum, 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 and yum, ham and cake and, and lots and of bread pretzels that are dipped in white chocolate mm. and sprinkles. And so suddenly travels. Oh, I miss all of the chocolate dipped cherries. All the stuff you can't eat. Now. All the stuff I can't Somebody eat. Somebody has I a trigger on food. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. You have meltdowns when it comes to food. I know. So, but I know what they are and I, I own them. I pretend to not enjoy any of my food when I'm around you. No, I like it when you enjoy your food. I know, I'm kidding. Well, you're sounding very serious. <laughs> <laughs> that sense of humor did not seem funny no, to is, me. This is your filter. <laughs> this is your triggered filter. <laughs> Just come back to I'm me. I'm putting this serious face in. But triggers around food happen. And so people, whether it's sometimes it's people actually have battles with bulimia, anorexia, which are really serious issues. And mm-hmm. now they're faced with potentially being exposed at a family meal. Or um, or you might have felt like you gained weight since your family saw you last yep. year. Or you might feel like people are watching what you eat and people are judging you making. And none of, I mean, I have never gone to a Christmas meal and judged what people ate. No, I don't even think about it. I'm too busy stuffing my own face. I'm like, wow. But for me, I grew up in a childhood where my family, my extended family, when I got with them, would always make fun of my weight. Mm-hmm. I've talked about this before on the podcast, but they would they'd be like, hey, you want another another roll for your roll? That was yeah. such a phrase that was so played over and over again. Yeah. Um, but they would scowl. They'd be like, oh, you got enough food there on your plate? Do you really need all those mashed potatoes? I mean, just these passive aggress- aggressive little digs. Oh man, that's the worst. That were really consistent. I want to go back and karate chop them all. Yeah, right in their right in their baby makers. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, that's something that you get to be aware of. And what am I going to do with this issue with food? I can either have a million more Christmases and and holidays where I have big explosions, or I actually face my issues. Or where I with eat her- all my feelings. Yeah, where I eat all my feelings. Because again, like you said, all of a sudden you gain 10 pounds over Christmas, not because the food was just so irresistible, but the pain you were trying to resist so bad. You're comforting. Well, Mm -hmm. and this is what I love the journey that you've gone on as you learned to get real comfort to your soul. No more comfort eating. It like is, it's crazy. I've, it's one of the most dramatic changes I've seen in a human. Zero. I don't have any desire. I don't ever get these cravings for food anymore at all. Yeah. It's wild. But so here's what I would recommend. If you struggle with food, have a few people that you talk with that about, not as accountability, like, did you mess up? But like somebody that you can text real quick. I'm feeling like I want to eat this whole pie or I'm I'm feeling terrified of eating in front of people, like where you can let somebody know what's going on and they can just kind of be moral support for you. The mashed potatoes are just staring me down, screaming, just smother me in gravy. Mm, That Mm. sounds delicious. I think that's really good because you can get out of your environment. Sometimes it doesn't feel safe to do it in that Christmas environment that you're in. So knowing ahead of time who you're going to talk to, Mm -hmm. And then being like, yeah, sure, hit me up, whatever. And then and having them like in the moment just be loving and kind towards you. But then the the accountability would be like, okay, so tell me what is actually going on inside of you. Yeah. What were you actually feeling? Most people aren't self-aware enough to know why, which they're getting triggered by the people they're around. And so the easiest way to deflect or not deal or shove feelings aside is food. And so just even if you just are kind to yourself yeah, or, and like, okay, I understand that you feel really scared right now because family dynamics feel like you're powerless. And I understand that's why you're eating. One day we're going to not have to eat in situations like this. Totally. But I understand what's going on in you. Real and compassion. And I always have response. compassion. Yeah. yeah. Or you could always have your friends just send you berating and degrading text messages <laughs> that cause you to feel worse about yourself so that you don't eat, eat more. Oh, that's that feels healthy. <laughs> I like that idea. It's so funny because that's literally what people do to themselves. 
they do oh they they tell themselves those yeah they do messages but if i ever gave the suggestion have your friend tell you that you're a horrible person and that you're too fat for that food and you need to stop feeding your face or whatever it is they'd be like what why would you do that yeah i know it's absurd don't yeah stop doing it to yourself um some people come into the holidays with the idea that they're actually single or and, they don't have the kid that they're trying to have. Right. Or they... And they begin to watch people around them that have kids or the people around them that do have marriages or successful relationships or whatever they feel that they want or need. And that's a really painful thing. Yeah. And so I say, and this is one of those things where um, I, I have a lot of compassion for loneliness at holidays. Yeah. And so um, just being aware of the people around you and like, I always try to like with my single friends, like snuggle them a little bit more, yeah. like engage them a little bit more, try to not make it where they're the only, they're left out. Like, oh, let's try not to talk only about marriage things in front of you. And I mean, I'm not going to be awkward about it, but I'm just going to be mindful Right. Of I want them to feel like they belong. Yeah, which by the way, those of you, as we're going to kind of go into this journey of those of you that feel stable and great at, at Christmases, it's not your job to make someone better. No, you can't manage their emotions. You can't change them or anything. But the invitation is there to do things like, oh, you know, that person, they have a lot of pain around kids and I'm not, nec- I'm not going to not be me and I'm not going to not talk I'm about my kids. I'm going to have fun with my kids and we're going to enjoy but them. But I'm going to be able, I'm going to figure out ways to dialogue with them that are beautiful about the story of their about lives. their lives. And what's going on in, in their world. Yeah. It's not all, you know, self on my world. Yeah. Self-focused. I'm going to find ways to include them or I'm going to find things that they love and figure out how to engage in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, the last thing I'd say before, cause I think we're about to move on, but triggers from holidays is emotional flashbacks, which is mm-hmm. past events that happened around hol- holidays because people have such expectations for a holiday. Yeah. They have huge emotions. So often we've had huge family blow up. There's like huge family blowouts on Christmas or yeah. there's lots of disappointment Huge expectations leads to disappointment. So you could have years of memories of being disappointed over and over again. I know I know that I had one person I talked to f- for quite a while in their journey. And when the wife, the wife grew up having really phenomenal Christmases. Mm. And then she gets married and then she goes and attends Christmas with his family. Mm. And she has these strong expectations of what Christmas should be. Yeah. So there's all this buildup in her head. And when it isn't, she's having a meltdown of feeling like this Christmas was ruined. And it wasn't a bad Christmas. Totally. It It was just just a different normal. Mm It was a different culture of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so I think that especially uh, adjusting expectations as we go into experiences like I had great Christmases, but in my life, but I'm not going to be around the people that I used to be. Totally. How am I going to approach this with a heart that's open to ingest the culture that's available here for this family system or this friend group system that I'm joining in this for Christmas? Absolutely. Um, I do want to say this. It's a really big deal around Christmas and New Year's where people begin to reevaluate their entirety of their lives. (laughs) They're in reflection mode and they're like, oh boy, pass me another drink as they begin to think about the idea of like what didn't work and where they're not right now. Right. And I I just want to take one brief moment. Don't do a massive reevaluation of your entire year, especially over Christmas. Right. Let it be what it is. Enjoy it. Mm Mm-hmm. And if there's something you can think we're celebrating, celebrate it. Look for what is, not what isn't. Look for how to have gratitude. Look for... One more year, single, without kids. Don't do that. Yeah. No, it will (laughs) will kill you. It will just hurt you. And there are times to grieve, but typically there's a difference between grief and pity. And grief is much more connected to self-compassion and empowerment like I feel compassion for this and I'm gonna feel it and then I'm gonna keep moving but um pity goes like there I'm a victim to this and I'm never gonna be okay and I'm never gonna get what I want pity is connected to hopelessness yeah pity pity is um pain acknowledged uh with the belief that we are powerless yeah 
that it cannot be healed or solved. It'll never be healed. Grief It'll is never pain be acknowledged with the hopeful belief that there is a solution to it and that you're going to walk through the other oh, that side. That is a good quote. Yeah. I like that. I should make a meme out of that. We'll meme it. We'll meme, meme the it. hell out of it. Yeah. So if you're somebody who's had great Christmases, I love that. I think I'm like somewhere in the middle. I've had incredible Christmases yeah. and I've had really hard Christmases. And I feel like I'm in the middle. Like I enjoy Christmas, but I don't, I don't have huge hype, but I don't have huge sadness. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say that people who enjoy Christmas feel like they make the world a better place. It's true. Like the Cindy Lou who's mm -hmm. for going back to the Grinch, the, the girl who like loves Christmas and like, invites people into that like and people who are in a Grinch place feel really annoyed by that because mm -hmm. they really don't know what to do with love yeah but it's a beautiful thing and it's a gift to give the world and I love people who have cheer and who make this holiday something beautiful and yeah. so I just think if you enjoy Christmas to remember like oh this is a gift I bring to the world the ability to celebrate the ability to enjoy like it's there's a lot of hard things on the planet. I love when there's like good energy being released, celebration, life, joy, love. And so um I just want to like value that it's a beautiful gift to love Christmas. And um and people who don't we we're just trying to remind you like to have empathy. Yeah. Like they they're not just trying to be a grouch. And maybe you're like, well, they're just a victim. Yeah, they might be, but they also are in a lot of pain. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we have to let the Grinches of the world destroy our Christmas. Nope. I'm not letting them steal my presents and tree. <laughs> my, our fake non-Christmas Christmas tree. Yeah. I think that there's something about being able to posture yourself of like, oh, okay, I'm going to allow myself to create a boundary in my own soul. I don't even have to be, you know aggressive back to the Grinch who might show up at Christmas dinner. I'm yeah. just going to go, I'm going to let them be them. It's okay for me to be happy while they're not happy. It's okay for me to yep. celebrate this moment. And I don't have to feel shame about my joy of this holiday. I don't have to feel shame about the gifts that I'm getting. I don't have to feel shame about the gifts that I'm giving. Yeah. I don't have to, you know, f feel like I'll let them stew in their judgment or their pain that they haven't known how to reconcile yet. And I can be kind and gentle and patient with them in the process. Well, my thought is it's one of those things where you need to know your tendency. So if you tend to be over responsible for people, yeah. Justin's trying to say you don't have to make everyone happy. In yeah. fact, if, if you're sad and somebody's trying to force you to not be sad, it actually feels awful. Yeah, it really does. Um, but if, if your tendency might be that you get so self-absorbed in the holiday that you don't notice people. And if that's your tendency, you actually need to figure out how to reach out and engage and not just get lost in your happy bubble. Cause I've seen both. I know some people that get lost in a happy bubble and become very narcissistic it's in so how they're real. doing it. And so it's where am I coming from? If I overly care about people and forget to have fun because of that, I need to come to the middle. If I underly care about people cause I get so lost in my great experience that I don't notice that my cousin is alone in the corner crying like then I need to become more aware of people around me. I think that it's a, it's the word of the day that we've used a million times, I think on this podcast, what? but it's called balance. balance. Yeah. Total balance and figuring out, I, I think if you were to go through this holiday, go through Christmas and go, what, what's one thing I can find balance in, mm -hmm. in how I process this? Mm -hmm. Where am I not in balance? If you could find one thing, that was out of balance and find some way to readjust and bring balance to it. That would be incredible for you. Yeah. So other ways having compassion for people, you have any other thoughts of how that they, I would they say, can meet them? don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> you know what stupid is. Why are you still single? <laughs> Why don't you have kids yet? Uh huh. Why? And like, I think everybody has good natures in things, but just trying to I think those questions can be asked when they're delivered with someone who's present with their heart and they're having an intimate dialogue that led that direction. My but, yeah. My point in that is most people don't know like if I'm having an intimate conversation with someone and they're maybe talking about the kids, yeah, what is is there a reason you don't have kids yet? Did you want to share that? But right. usually we don't get that far down the rabbit trail of actual connection to have a healthy dialogue yeah. like that. It's just 
How come y'all don't have kids yet? Totally. We got like four of them. Totally. Why aren't you married? You've been single for so long. Have you got your college degree yet? Yeah. What is wrong with you? Have you figured out your career? Like holidays are not the time to, to be figure emotionally out people's, obtuse. <laughs> <laughs> to figure out people's life plans. Like that's what my I used to have like several grandparents where it'd be like whenever they saw me, it'd be like, now we need to talk through your entire life plan. There was an agenda. There was an agenda behind it. It wasn't just my an, life an, an inquisitive state. It oh, was no, it like, wasn't inquisitive. Here it comes was, Abby back around. We've been meaning to talk to her for the last year it since was we saw our last Christmas. confrontation mm-hmm. about my life. And I'm like, listen, there's a lot of times to do confrontation. Why do you got to do it all yeah. at Christmas? Why can't you make that phone call six months ago? Yes. <laughs> if you really needed to share your information. With no, me. if somebody says something that hurts your feelings, stand up for yourself and have a voice. Yeah. Don't say, I'm not going to do it because it's Christmas time. You'd be like, but, hey. But things that are not pertinent to the holiday. Yes. Like I've been meaning to confront you about. Why are you a Republican? Yeah. Why are you a Democrat? Totally. Now's the time to do it. (laughs) Now's the time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that that's really good. I think a physical touch. I'm aware of that. Some people don't like it. So I'm also aware of that. But it's a time to be extra affectionate. It's a time to be extra loving um, yeah. because we know people have pain that we may not see. A lot of people carry invisible wounds, invisible pain, invisible trauma, invisible loss. And so being extra affectionate, telling people what you love about them. Christmas yeah. is not supposed to be like, I give you a gift and that's all that's required of me. It's no. meant to be I'd a I'd rather time. there not even be one package under the tree for me, but there's just quality exchanges. Yeah, there's love and there's appreciation and there's gratitude involved. I agree. And so I think if you, and that's the thing, if you create a culture of love, then actually everybody starts to engage in it. Yeah, absolutely. So you get to set the tone. Those of Mm -hmm. you who feel great about holidays. Or if you don't, you can set the tone of love. You totally can. But there's an invitation for you who isn't already in some emotional spiral to go, hey, I'm going to set the tone for this holiday for anyone that maybe has some pain. I'm going to create space where there's fun dialogues, there's play, there's words of affirmation being thrown around. I'm going to be genuine with people and people who are difficult. I'm going to be especially patient with. Yeah. And, and I'm going to be intentional. I'm just going to, when I'm out and about before, after Christmas, I'm going to be intentional just to be kind to the lady in front of me who's taking forever in line Mm -hmm. or whatever, because we just don't know what pain they're holding in their life. I think, uh, what was I going to say as a side note about being thoughtful i don't know i forgot it this is a very profound thought about thoughtfulness it was (laughs) my brain trailed off yeah okay so um here's if you struggle with the holidays just a few ways to be empowered make plans find little things to make you come alive decide i'm gonna go to a movie by myself that i've really been looking forward to on christmas or i'm gonna go with a bunch of friends or oh i don't feel family involved so i'm gonna feel I'm going to engage with a group of my friends and see if they'll go caroling with me mm-hmm. or I'm going to like just be proactive. Yeah. About maybe I don't have family finding people. Maybe I don't have friends, but I'm going to put out, I'm going to create a holiday. So I'm going to make something during this holiday season where I do a special dinner for people yeah. that I don't even know. And I'm going to invite. Yeah. Uh, we know one of your one of your family members did that. Oh yeah, she just said her company put out like anybody who doesn't who wants to come over for a holiday gathering, come on over, and three people came. Yeah, it was so fun, and it could be a, 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 a actual magical experience where you create something that you didn't foresee before, where you felt powerless to relationships and fa- powerless to creating the Christmas that you want or whatever. Maybe you can actually create that this year. Listen to Christmas music, like do things that bring your heart alive, um, and then I think reach out to people. Just honesty. If you struggle in the holidays, don't struggle alone. If there's anything yeah. I've learned. On this journey of me getting emotionally whole and working through sickness issues, it's the emotions buried in my body end up killing me, you know, and I can't do that. So I'm like, I can't afford to have an inner 
emotional battle that I don't let people know. Yep. I can't afford to just look really great on the outside, but secretly be suffering on the inside. It will kill you. And actually people love vulnerability. Yeah. They feel super bonded to vulnerability. It always invites more vulnerability. So I just reach out to people, even if all you can say is like, Hey, I really struggle with loneliness in this season or Hey, I really need some encouragement or, Hey, I just had a really hard Christmas with my family. I need some extra love. Could we hang out? Yep. And people, a lot of times in our humanity, uh, we act very powerless to life mm -hmm. and we're hoping that that person's going to show up and ask us those quality yep. questions to bring it out of us. And yep. then we're all pissed because nobody asked us and totally. nobody cares. Nobody asked me this question. Well, you painted a big smile across your face and, yeah. or your scowl was just so repulsive that they're like, I guess they want to be alone and left alone. And so take the guesswork out of it. Be a powerful person before you even get to moments that could be a painful moment in a holiday. Tell them like, hey, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be visiting family. I'm going to be in some scenarios that I know are probably going to push some buttons for me. If you could give me a phone call or be available for me to give yep. you a call, that'd be great. Set yourself up for success. Yes. And then self-compassion. Have so much compassion like, oh, I know this is a hard time for me. Oh, I'm going to be extra patient. I'm going to be extra gentle. I'm going to be extra kind with the words mm -hmm. I use towards myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to understand myself and be on my own team. I'm going to believe the best about me yeah. in the midst of this. And don't, and don't make Christmas these times of the year, the times that you decide to cut out smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, That's hysterical. don't make life worse for yourself by trying to overcome some massive obstacle. So this Christmas is going to be the time where I decide to do my diet for the first time. Right. Totally. If you have these major events, don't yep. try and start something that's just going to add to the stress by disrupting yep. your norm even a million times worth, yep. worse. You know, like if you have to sneak away from the family event, pop a cigarette in, get it over with. Don't make that the family event you stop at. And remember that perfect Christmas isn't the goal. No, Connected not at all. Connected Christmas is the goal. Surviving your family <laughs> is. <laughs> No, like, but really connected Christmas, which is, it is fun and adventurous and can be messy and can, you know, like a lot of our good memories happen because of things that were funny that happened that weren't the plan. And yeah. so just remembering like parents with your kids, if something goes unexpected, if you can't get the toy wrapped or you can't get it put together or like where the kid sets fire to the Christmas tree, <laughs> like this is going to be an awesome story We're 10 years from now. This. We'll never forget it. Yeah. But embracing that we've talked about that in past podcasts about adventures and embracing yep. the things that happen in life. And, you know, I had a person recently tell me about this uh, dating event that they went to mm -hmm. and it was atrocious. It cost <laughs> them $30 to participate in this experience and it was just so difficult for them. Right. What's the point of it? I said, you can either complain about it or realize that you just paid. That was the best money ever because you just got the best story ever. Absolutely. Right. A hundred percent. And there are these events in life. Yeah. Like these holiday seasons where you couldn't buy the awesomeness, the awesome story you're about to get mm -hmm. when grandpa loses his mind and does something wildly crazy. And that's so that's part of enjoying life is finding those nuggets of gold that are in the day to day experiences. Yep. So we're so thankful for you guys. We're so thankful you're a part of our Christmas bounty this year in mm -hmm. the sense of like when I feel I feel connected to all of the listeners. I feel like it's a family. Yeah, you're part of our bounty. Our bounty. Our bounty yeah. family. You're our Christmas loot. Yeah, there are there are loot. And here's the deal. I want to talk about that. Okay. I want to talk about our listeners. Yeah. I want to talk our, about our relationship with them. Mm. We're, uh, we're going to define the relationship right now. <laughs> mm. I'm kidding. Um, Christmas. I just want to say that the people who have participated with us have been such an incredible gift. Huge. It literally has been. It's not one of those like, 
Oh, thank you for all those people who listen. It really is. I feel so loved when I get to hear people's stories Mm -hmm. of how they've allowed me and us to be part of their journey, their marriages, um, their friendships, their healing process. Yes. I'm like, that is so cool. Um, It's such a gift that I get to be in their world. Yeah, it's very honoring. Um, And so I want to say all of you, to all of you, really thank you for that Mm -hmm. gift um and thank you for your support yeah i know so many of you have reached out and sent us emails just thanking us Mm -hmm. and telling us what we mean to you and i'm like oh i feel so filled i mean it's not just an ego stroke it's more than that it's like oh i i just feel genuinely loved yeah and it makes it feel worth it because we don't really see their faces when we're in here recording. Uh huh. <laughs> so it makes just it feel like just the two like, of us. Yeah. <laughs> just the two, two of us. us. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I feel really thankful and honored, and every message or comment that I get about it, like none of it feels like people write me all the time. They're like, "I'm sure everybody tells you this," and I'm like, "I don't think it actually ever feels less impactful to have somebody say like." this is how my life changed because of this or yeah. we're engaging. My favorite is that families are talking about things and that yeah. um, small groups of people will listen and, t- and process with each other. It just feels like a great gift. So, And hopefully for some of you, uh, even with this episode, can maybe listen to it with family. I mean, we joked about it in the beginning, but maybe at some point you can listen to it with the family and talk about like, oh, what are we all bringing to the table in our own hearts as we're gathering together or friend group can listen to it and, and maybe it can really open up dialogues. So I just wanted to say that. And, you know, if some of you, we, I think I've said this before a couple of times, but if there are stories you want to share with us as a Christmas gift to us and just tell us like, hey, here's some of what I've experienced through the connected life. Here's yeah. what's gotten healed. Here's what was valuable to me. We'd we'll love to hear it. You can email us that at LFA at stumballconsulting.com. Um, that's usually the easiest way to get that information. I to have us. homework. Homework. Here comes homework. Enjoy the holidays. That means Christmas, New Year's, the beginning of 2020. Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Yeah, all of them. Do all of the holidays. Enjoy them. Have fun. Find the things you're thankful for in the midst of it look for the things that are working out for you and find just any moment where you can connect to the goodness of life. Yeah. Even if it's just one moment over the whole season, it's worth it to connect in to the gift. And last but not least, if you haven't signed up yet, LFA 2020 living fully alive is hitting the last day to sign up is December 31st. I think we're going to extend it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. But for now, December 31st. January 6th is the first day of it. But um, you can, maybe you'll have some fresh loot under the tree and you want to buy yourself that gift. Yeah. Or your last minute Christmas shopping. And you're like, this person needs help. (laughs) Jump online. You're like, I don't want to trigger around my family anymore. I'm buying this for everybody. Jump on to stumballconsulting.com and you can sign up for that. Or you can still get the father series at Justin. And, and the Tree of Life book at Justin and Abby, that's abi.com. And they're 25% off till? 25% off till Christmas. Till the end of today. Oh, today? 23rd, end of the 23rd. Oh, awesome. Get on that. Yeah. So anything else? Merry Christmas. Jingle bells, jingle, jingle bells, bells, jingle all the way.